second session for today's National Science Day. So, firstly, I'd like to call upon stage Mr. Ankur Kalita for felicitation. So first of all, you, I think you need to find your interest, and uh, there are lots of things you can do. If you just want to follow astronomy, let's say, you can do a lot of things. Like you can do galaxy evolutions, you can do stellar evolutions, you can do cosmology and stuff. So I think the first, it's very important to understand where you stand and what you want to do. And then you can look for universities. I started with Google. Like everyone has access to Google, right? So you just look at like, oh, who's doing what in this field? Like I got a little bit uh, interested in stellar evolution and observational uh, astronomy in general. So what I did was to just Google it. Like who's doing good research in stellar evolution? Uh, I had access to some journals and I think it's free, at least a few editions of it. Uh, there's something called annual reviews in astronomy and astrophysics. And uh, this is like, um, so all the big shots write these reviews. And these are review papers, these are not re research papers, but like whatever has happened in this, in certain domain over the past 20 years, let's say, they would write about it in a very good review. It's kind of long, it's 30, 40 pages, but you get the idea uh, what has been happening on that certain domain. And then, so I got my ideas from just by reading these uh, review papers. And then I looked at these specific people who wrote these reviews on Google and where they work, what they do. Uh, I think that's how you kind of, um, you know, discover the connections or uh, like what are those universities that were doing uh, good work in the field that you want to work on. Um, and then I think, uh, I mean, going into an university or like getting uh, accepted in an university is not, the, not a very uh, tough task. It's very easy, I would say. Like if you apply, you have the chance to get it, get accepted. It just, it's, harder to survive there. But yeah, of course, you need, uh, sorry, just a minute. Like, you need, what do you need to get accepted in university? Some grades, a bit of good grades, uh, an SOP, and some people who can recommend you. Uh, I think you would always have um, professors who are willing enough to write your recommendation. So if you're really interested, because I, I feel that the research is actually um, very good uh, outside India. In some cases, at least in astronomy, I would say. So if you're interested, feel free to like just you know, explore these things on your own. Nobody would talk about it, or nobody would help you, actually. Nobody helped me, me so, yeah. But, um, yeah, of course, like, if you're interested, just Google it. Use Google. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Like, whether 
time to have this uh, possible. Yes. I think you need to. Well, I'm not an expert again. Like I don't know much about time travel, but I think what you need to achieve is like uh, a speed close to the speed of light, which yes. is kind of uh, unphysical, I would say. Uh, does it get possible in the future? Mm. No, not really. I mean, what is it? It exists. But yeah, and then I see that the uh, general public is more interested in this type of questions that I have no answer to. I mean, like uh, when we uh, uh, when we travel out, uh, outside of outside into outer space, mm -hmm. uh, we see that uh, time is relatively running slower for us. Well, yeah, but that no. So yeah, time is related. That's it. Right? Yeah, but um, it de so it depends like how fast you're traveling, yes. right? Uh, and depending on that, uh, if you're uh, like, if you uh, achieve a relativistic speed, then time slows down for you. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, and one more question: mm -hmm. uh, Is the is the speed of light like you mentioned something about speed of light? Uh, you got it, the frame of reference. Uh, uh, when, uh, is there anything faster than speed of light? Well, not to my knowledge. Like, yeah. uh, yeah, when? Yeah, sure. <laughs> maybe, yeah, of course. Maybe there are some things that the theoretical physics people have discovered or something. Theoretical physics in which, uh, uh, when, uh, when, uh, when is the object traveling uh, opposite to the speed of light, and the one of the objects are Traveling with the same speed of light, would that object uh, no. the other object that it is traveling Faster twice? Than, twice? No, 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 no. That's not that, that, that's not how it works. Uh, because yeah, it, it's not just simple addition yes. at that point. Huh? Yes. Um, so then you have to basically take care of the uh, frame of reference. reference. And photons uh, are the only medium of communication. Now. This problem was, could not, uh, well, cosmology could not give the answer to this uh, problem, and that's why at late uh, 1980s, inflation solved out this problem by saying that, well, okay, that's a 10 to the power minus 32 seconds ex exponential expansion, and that was instant, and that's why, um, well, everything got instantaneously sprayed out. The temperature became, um, you know, distributed form. Yeah. Sir, 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 what is the simulation? Simulation. What was it? Yeah, that was uh, that was the quantum fluctuation that I I don't know if I have time to speak about it, and I will. So that there were some perturbations in you get it from quantum field theory. Um, quantum fluctuations we call it and where I have worked. I don't know if I if I if I get time to cover it up. Yeah. Uh, state another two problem which is similarly. So that's how I've just made a diagram A equals B. Uh, flatness problem and monopole problem. If you search in Google, you can, uh, or maybe use some AIs. There are more AIs. Um, so you can get to know about these two problems as well. Um, okay. Uh, so my work is basically on the plant data of CMB, uh, which uh, says basically that uh, you get some temperature fluctuations, although. Uh, the universe is largely in large scale, it's uh, homogeneous and isotropic, but yet at quantum level there are certain temperature fluctuations distributed all along the uh, sky of CMB and that has some origin, has to have some origin from the cosmic inflation era. Uh, precisely what happened is that there were some perturbations, to answer your question, there were some perturbations and some quantum fluctuations and those quantum fluctuations, due to those quantum fluctuations, what I talked about in cosmic inflation, that the inflated potential, it got, uh, you know, it came in ground chemistry or the true vacuum state, but not true vacuum, I could rather not move at that, maybe I consider it false vacuum, the middle state, state. So, that was the reason, the quantum fluctuations was the reason why, the, in the first hand, why the inflating potential started to roll down the potential hill coming to a certain 
valley like shape if I could not have shown the graph but it's something like you can imagine a downhill so when it comes to a downhill and it then the energy skates start and we, we get a recombination error this is a recombination error uh, this picture is precisely 380,000 years after Big Bang when the first photon has escaped could have escaped but this is prior to this all what you had is a you know uh, fluid of plasma where there is a haphazard movement of uh, all the particles like maybe hydrogen interacting to form helium and stuff like that. Uh, but this was the first footprint of the universe, they literally called footprint of the universe when the first photon had a kind of jailbreaked the, um, or what do I, how do I put it? Um, the barrier, we call it cosmological barrier, and uh, we have got this picture. Detected by first W map, but so didn't have much detail, but then this is Planck's, which had a big size detail. And uh, I don't know. Yeah. Wrap up? Okay, but anyways. So, yeah, so my uh, work was so that I could not have shown this uh, equation, but anyways. Um, so, my work is basically is to determine how these fluctuations came into place for the first time and what was the reason behind those quantum fluctuations and uh, to find out that whatever plan is found out is that matching exactly with the theoretical data so my work was to compare the theoretical data with the observational data and check that whatever the result plan is found is correct or not and I can show you my calculations these are some actions I would have described what are actions, but I don't have time. Uh, we get gravitational waves and everything from this scalar field, and I, okay, I don't have time. Uh, Stating from this simple harmonic oscillator thing, anyways, I'll skip it. Uh, and this is the final result power spectrum. So, power spectrum is everything you get the distribution of temperature. Uh, of this uh, temperature fluctuation, so how the temperature has, uh, fluctuations are distributed among the entire CME sky, and if you can calculate this power spectrum, which has been calculated observationally by Planck, and that's my data, my evaluation actually, not the data. So this is the data. If you um, convert it into spectral index, then you will get the data which has found out, which has precisely been found out by Planck. So yeah, that's it. I could have shown you some pictures, but do I have time? I don't have time. You can, you can see some pictures. Uh, okay. So, so um, these are my days in Nottingham. Uh, well, this is my university. Um, my campus. And this is my cosmology class. Professor Ed Copeland, one of the famous cosmologists. She is delivering the lectures in class. Um, Portland building, where we get all the student services and everything. This is the trade building, or more like the administrative building. Um, well, that's field behind uh, Portland building. That's auditorium. Um, it's called Ke Keaton Auditorium. There are several, but this is one of them. And this is the interior of the auditorium. Um, that's a library. That's George Field. That's for uh, science. Precisely, there are other stuff as well. This is another library. It's Hallward Library. Uh, this is another campus, you can say. Uh, we have four campuses in the entire UK and outside UK, Malaysia and China. But inside UK, this is another campus. That's uh, This one is the chemistry building, that's engineering and that's a research building. You can see that's a common pop, or pop studio, we call it. Oh, like stuffs for eating and so everything. Uh, this is one of the garden, Millennium Garden, we call it. Um, this is the campus itself. Some pics from the snow, from the snowy time. Uh, lovely view. Um, yeah, so this all has been captured by me. And this is a, this is a lake uh, inside my campus, and it's very beautiful during winter. This is my hostel, my hostel campus actually, and my room is not visible by the way. Um, yeah, and this is another campus, this is Jubilee campus uh, for engineer for uh, computer science and everything, CSIT, AI, everything. This is Jubilee Campus infrastructure. So very beautiful. Infrastructurally very beautiful. And this is another campus for plant science, agriculture, everything. This is this called Sutton Bonington campus. Um, this is SB as well. 
SB campus, SB campus. Uh, yeah, this is a barn, we call it barn, where we get foods and everything in SB campus. And that's my friend, by the way, from China. Uh, Mr. Jing Hao Yang is doing whatever he's doing, I don't know what he's doing. Uh, yeah, that's something I always say myself that say to myself to remind it's a lovely dark and deep, but I promise to keep my miles to go before I and miles to go before I sleep. Thank you, Vishal. Uh, because of the time limit, I think we cannot take any questions right now, but you can always message him or mail him. So you can, uh, I will, I can provide you his email ID or all these things, you can ask me. So let us thank Ankur and uh, uh, Vishal for their, uh, for their introduction of uh, their studies. These talks were there so that you guys can be motivated that few days back they were sitting in your position and now they are doing in global level very good and high level of works and research right so you guys also can do it okay so let us thank again with a round of applause to both Ankur and Vishal and I think uh, I will invite them very soon again for mainly for physics student classes Okay, yeah, so yeah. I will invite you guys sure. again. Anytime. Okay, thank you. Now we uh, we are going to begin our debate competition. But before that, we have with us our Dean Academic Sir, Professor Dr. Ankur Ganguly Sir. So I would like to invite him for a uh, short address to the students. Respected Head of the Departments, Dean of School, in absentia, because I do not see uh, Professor Arunada Devi here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, my dear students. So today we have gathered here for scattering, right? To celebrate scattering, right? So 28th February, a very auspicious day for us because that's the day we celebrate for scattering. So scattering happens in life, right? Do you agree? So each and every day we are through scattering and uh, that phenomena when converted to light bags you a Nobel Prize, right? And after uh, who was delivering my previous speaker, one of our alumni, Vishal, he reminded me of a book by Schrodinger, What is Life? Right? So, uh, a very interesting book. I think as a student of science, all of us should have a copy of What is Life? The book, you will see one chicken and one egg. Okay? A hatched egg. And accompanying with the chicken and a very famous book, uh, written in the year 1943. Maybe it is a collection of his lectures in the Imperial College of Dublin. What is life? So I think on the science day, let us take an oath that all of us should at least have one reading of what is life. And in uh, the five or six chapters that uh, it is collected, on the sixth chapter, when uh, he is concluding, he says that this is not that I am telling this for the first time. It was already there in the Upanishads. He had exclusively, quote unquote, told that it was in the Upanishads, where in the Upanishads it is written, Atman equal to Brahman. Right? The self is equal to the universal soul. The self is equal to the universal soul. And to explain that phenomena, a beautiful picture we have, that is a droplet into the ocean or the sea. A droplet, a single water droplet into the ocean or the sea. So, that is life. And I was thinking that when he was talking about photons, Schrodinger beautifully told that according to quantum theory, right? I'm, though I am not a man of physics, but uh, being a man of science and engineering, uh, we read a lot. And he told that how beautifully a photon or an electron can exist in two places at the same time. Right? And we are talking now about multiverse. Right? 
so the levels of energy and if you do a in a go into the depth of reading and followed that uh, i was reading uh, life after death just what is life and then life after death again a very famous book if you go to life after death that tells that yeah there are existence of ghosts and spirits and all but if we just go into the depth they are all levels of energy so we are progressing from one level of energy to the other level of energy and two levels of energies can exist in different universes two levels of energy can exist in different universes and that is multiverse and we are shouting with that multiverse which was explained thousands of years back in the upanishads and vedas right can you imagine if i go back to uh, our stories of india during the vedas can you imagine in the age where we see that if i refer to mahabharata that sanjay sitting in one place in hastinapur was live casting the entire kurukshetra the battle of kurukshetra to his king dhritarashtra the sanyasis were at some time present in this place and at the same time they were present in some different places that means what the successful in converting e is equal to mc square that's what einstein derived that if we can take ourselves to e is equal to mc square can we exist at the same place at the same time can we do a time travel so uh, all these things keeps coming in my mind when i uh, because very little time we get throughout our day to have academic discussions and scientific discussions uh, being in an administrative role so but these things my student should as a student of science you should always explore because there are more things that are happening and science is propagating at a speed because we cannot imagine right so from meta to nano and nano to micro nano where we are now so uh, i hope uh, all of us had a beautiful day throughout this science day and we celebrated raman i feel very proud uh, of this day because uh, it was my city kolkata and uh, in the presidency college where sir c v raman used to work so as a citizen of kolkata i feel very proud so my bows to him and my bows to science and i hope uh, the mankind will progress leaps and bounds not only through science but through the aspirations of science in all our aspects of study because as students of science we think that science is the only important thing in this world no science is supported by arts by political science by everything so science is supported by english so ayushman is sitting here science is supported by political science so dhiraj is sitting here right so uh, all of us are supported as a human kind so as we all grow the science grows and to my dear students as sir cv raman said that i am the master of my failure right be the master of your failure because till you are not the failure you cannot win so you cannot discover so the more the failures we have we have should have the more crunch of the discoveries that will come in our way so uh, i hope you enjoyed the day and i thank the organizers for organizing uh, this event throughout the day in a very beautiful manner thank you one and all So today I am speaking for the motion. The topic is only made in India for Vikshit Bharat. My name is Yaman Kalita from BSc Sixth Semester Chemistry. So first, let me talk about Vikshit Bharat. So Vikshit Bharat is the vision of our Prime Minister Shri Narendra Damodar Modi. He wants to make India a 30 billion dollars worth economy by 2047. Four pillars of Vikshit Bharat are Yuva, Mahila, Kishan, and Garib. 
Now, Made in India concept is also under this Vikshit Bharat mission. So first of all, uh, so last year we got the news that India surpassed China to become the most populated country in the world. We have a population of about 140 crores. So uh, in this 140 crores population, 68% are of working age. That is approximately 95 crores of Indians are of working age. And if we go by employed, unemployed rate, we have 40 million people who are still unemployed. Now, how can this unemployment, you know, diminish? So here comes the made in India. If we started making everything we have in India itself, so it will give rise to enterprises, industries, companies, and this will give jobs to many people. Uh, also, it will also help in lower cost of production. Now, we, when you buy a product, if it's imported from somewhere else, there is travel cost, import tax. So, technically, the product cost become very high. But if we started making products in India itself, along with jobs to people, we'll have products in lower cost. That is one of the advantages. Our GDP will increase. Skill, man uh, skill enhancement will be there among all the Indians. So I will uh, like to give some other data. So we import approximately $700 billion um, worth of products from other countries. So $700 billion we are speaking here. That's too much. And we import, uh, uh, sorry, we import $700 billion and we export around 400. So see the difference. So if somehow we can reverse this, instead of importing 700, if we can export that, and how will this be possible? Made in India. Some would say that it is not possible for everything to be made. Now, Okay, so here I would like to quote an example from the ancient India. Ancient India was the richest India. Now, wh whatever people have uh, achieved today in the foreign, many technologies are made. But where is the base? The base is from our Vedas, our Upanishads. If today foreigners can use our technology to monopolize our country, why can't Indian monopolize themselves? Uh, I think as growing up, I have seen that there are a lot of made in China products. So somehow China in the last years have monopolized India, but now due to our effort of our honorable prime minister, it is not there. But see, a country like China can monopolize all the market of India, but why is Indians afri afraid to monopolize themselves in their own country? Why can't we proudly say we will use made in India product. Why can't India make their own products? And people have to encourage this because Indians have the potential. There are so many brains in India. Okay, so uh, in the conclusion, I want to say that uh, people should actually support this mo made in India motion. Like how once Mahatma Gandhi to fight the British, he said boycott foreign things and bought khaki. Similarly, now is the time. We have people like Susruta. We have people who are, Susruta is the father of uh, surgery. His statue is in Melbourne. But why isn't Susruta statue in India? Because we Indian have some kind of uh, obsession with Western culture, but it is actually, but we must understand that Western culture is derived from India. And when people say made in some other countries, Indians are all over. So where it is written made in USA, that is also made by Indians only. So Indians are making everything everywhere, but this time let's make it in our country so that all the profits, all everything benefits come here. And India can be Atma Nirbhar in true aspects. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. To the, the respected chairperson, uh, to my ladies and gentlemen. So I would like to start my argument by saying, stating something simple. United, we fall. And divided, we stand. Isn't that line a little absurd? We should be united while we stand, don't we? Now, um, how many of you are familiar with Tata? Most of us, right? So Tata was the first Indian manufacturing company to have created a um, indigenous vehicle, passenger vehicle, to be more precise, in the year 1998. That is a very big accomplishment, isn't it? But how did Tata manage to do that? Was it out of its own power and will? No. Tata was just a simple um, um, 
um, simple manufacture of train, part, uh, train parts, to be more precise. But in 1954, Tata formed a bond with Daimler Benz, and um, it was called Telco at that time. And then it became Tata. What they did is they produced trucks together. And this truck, the parts of these trucks were manufactured in Germany and they were bought to India. And this is how Tata's journey began as a vehicle manufacturer. Now that is remarkable, but without the help of the West, would Tata have done it on its own, accomplished such a big thing on its own? Probably, but it would have probably have taken de decades for it to. Now, let's talk about competition. We have, um, we have a lot of competition in, I mean, we are literally part of the rat race. Since um, we, um, we have, since we live in a country which has so much of population, we, uh, we, uh, we have to take part in competitions like JE and NEET and IITs. Now IIT selects, now IIT selects the best of us, right? It selects the best of uh, us or the students. So why should we compromise for this country when the country doesn't compromise for us? Because. Um, IITs would uh, select the best of the students and then they will take them, right? So why should we select Indian mid products which are not best? W our country should um, should um, try producing the best instead of just made in India. It should be best in India. Instead of made in India, it should be move in India because our transportation sucks. Uh, it's very weak, I'm sorry. Um, now, let's come to Pfizer and Co uh, Covisil. Now, since this is science day, let's talk about uh, Pfizer. It is 95% efficient and it was built, um, this vaccine was built outside India. And the Indian one, the Indian version, Covisil, is 70.5% um, since the time is up now. So, um, I'll, I'll just... Uh, Conclude by adding that Pfizer is only 70.5% efficient, and um, I'm sorry, Pfizer is 95% efficient, and Covisil is only 70.5% efficient. So I would rather go for Pfizer than Covisil because Pfizer um, is not made in India, though. Thank you. Respected jury members and my teachers, my fellow match, and honorable Gage, and while well Andrew present here, first of all, good evening, one and all present here. Today, I'm HNB, students of BSc Maths, would like to share some few points for the motion of uh, only made in India for Big Seed Bharat. I strongly support this motion because we already know that uh, development means economic proper prosperity, technological advancement, industrialization, and so on. So all these things will get only when we met and produced in our own land, that is India. And my second point is, on uh, 25th September 2014, our Prime Minister Narendra Modi introduced Met in India, a very important program in India. So uh, this program is focused on 25 economic sector. Uh, for job creations and skill enhancement and aims to transform India into a uh, global design and manufacturing export hub. So this clearly shows that only made in India will improve our, will develop our country. And my uh, third point is ability of young minds as we already know that most of the young generations of India uh, plans to move out of the country for the benefit of their life. So due to lack of young levers, India has always deprived to new and new ideas. So with Make in Indian campaign, the young populations would not only be provided with employment, but also their young and fresh minds and would take the industrial sectors to new heights. And my fourth point is development of rural area. As it is, uh, we already know that uh, if we set up a fac factory, uh, automatically the numbers of employment and the transportation is also increased and it means that, okay, last but not the least, uh, flow of capitals. Since the beginnings of capitalization, the Indian currency is being spent on the foreign countries. With the introductions of Made in India, the capital will only remain in India. 
but also the foreign countries will be provided to the nation as well. So, Mr. Speaker, sir, I strongly support these motions. I request you to pass the motions from the House. Thank you, everyone. Everyone, my name is Sumatamang and I am from MSc fourth semester. First of all, I would like to uh, tell about Vikshit Bharat. Vikshit Bharat is the vision of PM Narendra Modi to make India a developed country by the year 2047, which means that he is targeting to achieve a 30 trillion dollar economy or the third largest economy in the world. But is it just a slogan or a sankal? Is it just a election mar marketing or because the election are coming the next? two, three months, so is it just a marketing or is it really a vision of the uh, ruling government? So I would like to say, I am. I would like to be clear, first of all, I am not against Made in India. I am against only Made in India because Made in India is a good initiative, but only Made in India is not possible because India is, like, is a developing country. So for us, uh, in a developing country to be fully dependent and solely dependent just in only for made in India companies or products is not possible because no no nation is self-sufficient or self-reliant because we need support from other foreign investors or we can say we need guidance from other companies as and as my fellow friends has said that um, uh, the, and she was distracted from the topic, first of all. The topic is only made in India, not made in India. She was distracted from the topic. I want to make sure it's only made in India. Only made in India is very different from made in India. And the second disagreement is with the product. For example, you say that uh, import and export, the cost of import and export. I strongly disagree with that. Because, for example, the boat, you know boat, it's an electronic company. The products, they import it from outside, but the assembly is done in India. So it is an Indian company, but the products are bought from outside. So it is, and if you see nicely in the covering on the packaging, it is written made in China. Why is it so? If it is an Indian company, then why is it made in China? Then I would like to also disagree with my fellow friend. She also made again a uh, problem with the made in India versus make in India. You have to be clear with your topics. Because she wasn't clear. She was talking about make in India and also about the setting up of factories because setting up a factory is not very an e it's not an easy job we need um, uh, infrastructure good infrastructure we also need um, uh, uh, skill facilities skill factories because most of the workers are not skilled or qualified to set up a factory and for factory you need infrastructure and not just random any investor will invest in your company if you don't have enough technologies advanced technology and you don't have uh, enough um, infrastructure and skilled workers, no one is going to invest. Even the government is not going to invest, even if they have uh, provided certain schemes also. So with, so with this, I'd like to conclude. Thank you. Made in India isn't just a label. It's a statement of polity, innovation, and national pride. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. Today, I stand for a vision that is as simple as it is profound. Only made in India for Vixit Bharat. In this era of globalization, it is very easy to forget the local production. But let's remember that our nation's progress lies in our hands, in the products that we make right here. So what is made in India? Made in India signifies products manufactured within the country. The manufacturing process, the value addition or the assembly has taken place in the country itself, which adds up to the country's economy, reducing dependency on the imports. There are various advantages of only made in India. Firstly, self-reliance. Relying on domestically made products reduces dependency on the exports, strengthening national security, increasing economic growth. It also assures, as one of my friend mentioned about the quality, I would say that the products made in India ensure superior quality and safety for consumers. It also promotes sustainable development, minimizing the carbon em emission associated with the transport promoting environment con conservation. It also preserves cultural heritage, traditional craftsmanship, contribution to 
कल्चरल आइडेंटिटी मेड इन इंडिया फॉर विकसित भारत प्रेजेंस अ वायबल सोल्यूशन टू द pressing issue of unemployment i would like to say that according to a report by the confederation of indian industry cii every 1% increase in the manufacturing output creates approximately 20 million additional jobs in india also let's take a uh, example of make in india initiative such as the growth of india's mobile manufacturing unit according to icea the indian cellular electronics association mobile handset manufacturing industry has created over 60 lakh direct and indirect jobs and also the msmes uh, adds up to around 30% of the india's gdp as one of my friends said regarding the investment in technology i believe that with investment in technology and skill development we can match if not match we can surpass the level of the foreign products which benefits the local industries and in, in conclusion i would like to say that only made in india it's not just a slogan it's a pathway to brighter future for vixen bharat let's come together to build a nation where every product reflects our commitment to progress pride and sustainability thank you picasso said and i quote everything you can imagine is real and i think proposition bench has taken the statement very seriously greetings honorable speaker person in the august house today as i stand in front of you i feel responsible and accountable to vehemently oppose today's motion honorable speaker person now i would like to start my argument and within the stipulated time i am going to prove in this august house that only made in india for viksit bharat is not a possible statement honorable speaker person my first an important argument is around education and i would like to delve into the argument by studying these two important questions does the prevailing education system of india cultivate human resource in accordance to its reality does it provide environment which ensures entrepreneurship on the basis of its competitive advantage the answer is absolutely no and that's why there is huge difference between the human resource and its competitive advantage now why am i discussing about human resource because when we discuss make in india we must take care that make in india or made in india is only possible by the manufacturing and the lever process the students the doctors the human resource will make a make in india and possible statement and when it was launched in 2014 till 2024 it was unsuccessful because of this one of the primary reasons for instance for the iits mits there are few institutions around the country i'm sure you can name a few around the country those institutions tended to be the islands of excellence floating in the sea of mediocrity the average indian higher education institutions is simply not of the quality that you and i all of us in this house would like to see and that that tends me into the eve that i have added to this catechism unemployability or employability talk to the employers talk to the ceo what do they tell that they are not satisfied with the quality of graduates they are getting in, in, in fact the federation of indian commerce of industry have found a report that 64% of the employers are not satisfied with the quality of graduates they are getting and that's why we must work on the labor force we must work on the we must work on the students and thus i move on to my second argument which is around healthcare systems now why healthcare systems when i discuss healthcare system it means an individual health is the primary thing in a nation and when i discuss healthcare systems make in india will discuss about the infrastructure the make in india will discuss about machineries but the problem is not machineries and infrastructure the problem is in rural areas according to the directives of world health organizations and the government of india the ratio between the patient and doctor should be 1000 is to 1 but the but the case of northeast is worst that is 6225 is to 1 that is for 6225 patient there is one serving doctor so in such case scenario we should reduce the disparity between the rural and the urban areas we should increase the labor force we should work on the manufacturing process we should work on the number of doctors in fact on 16th of february published in guwahati plus the recording to the reports of 
नीति आयोग मेघालय इज द थर्ड पोअरेस्ट स्टेट ऑफ इंडिया विथ विथ ट्वेंटी सेवन पॉइंट सेवन नाइन परसेंट पीपल बींग मल्टी डायमेंशनली पोअर एंड दस वेन आई कंक्लूड आई मस्ट कंक्लूड ऑन द फैक्ट दट ओनली मेक इन इंडिया इज नॉट द वे वी कैन डेवलप ए नेशन वी कैन अचीव अ डेवलप नेशन टैग बाई टू थाउजेंड फोर्टी सेवन वी कैन अचीव द डेवलप नेशन टैग बाई टू थाउजेंड फोर्टी सेवन ओनली बाई वर्किंग ऑन ह्यूमन रिसोर्स डॉक्टर्स स्टूडेंट्स एक्सेट्रा एंड एक्सेट्रा वर्किंग ऑन द रूरल एरियाज विद दीज आई रेस्ट माई केस नॉट माई कॉज थैंक यू ऑनरेबल स्पीकर पर्सन थैंक यू ऑगस्ट हाउस innovation and entrepreneurship are the key drivers of india's development the famous quote which has been given by nr narayana murthy which which actually shows what is the need of the india uh, a very good afternoon to all of you sitting here today i will be speaking for the motion where the topic is only made in india for vaccine bharat let us begin with the vaccine diplo uh, vaccine uh, diplomacy of india we have seen the medical the medical improve, uh, improvement in india in the in the, in the post covid uh, in the post covid where of uh, oh, okay sir uh, uh, in the uh, okay sir okay sir Uh, in the post uh, vaccine uh, in the post uh, covid pe pe period where india uh, uh, has uh, played a major role in geopolitics uh, we, uh, where uh, where the beneficiary where the beneficiary rate is 63.6% according to bharat biotech and in continuation with that uh, india and france solar alliance, alliance program on november 30 2015 has uh, was enacted uh, to boost the solar energy in developing country which shows the uh, uh, which shows the india as a global south leader uh, and also moving forward to the uh, make in india project which was initiated in 2011 by our shri narendra modi ji uh, which has many schemes under the under the program which is skill development uh, skill development skill india startup india digital india we know that ola ola cab swiggy byju's paytm are the major comp- companies which are benefited by the skill india program and also uh, the agni program acceleration pro uh, acceleration growth of new india's innovation which was launched to push the innovation uh, was uh, uh, which launched to push innovation ecos- ecosystem in the country by connecting people assisting in commercialization innovation in continuation of that <clears throat> i would like to say two minutes Uh, in uh, in continuation with that i would like to say we need to upgrade the labor intensive technology increasing the competition of good uh, good man and good manufacturing in india and in the conclusion i would like to conclude with that the shirt that the that the shirt this uh, blazer and the that the shirt blazer and the uh, trouser which i am which are which i am wearing are all made of india which shows premium is not in the is not wasted in the western and uh, western country but also in india thank you thank you good afternoon to my respected judges my teachers and the fellow audiences i am ananya goswami and i am from bsc mathematics second semester and i am going to present against today's topic that is only made in india for vikshit bharat and state why i negate this topic let us first start off with the basic ideas of this project vikshit bharat is the vision to transform india into a developed country nation by 2047 the 100th year of independence this vision encompasses various phases of development such as economic growth uh, environmental sustainability social progress and good governance to make india a developed country by 2047 Let's dive into the history of India to properly understand the then foreign trade uh, situation of British India first. India under British rule exported raw materials like silk, cotton, jute, wool, etc., and imported finished goods. But this showed the backwardness of the Indian economy. Right after India gained independence, the country was left politically, socially, and economically very weak, and revival was very tough. So to get a hold of the situation the planning commission of india came to work and implemented the five year plans from 1951 to 2017 recently the second five year plan from 56 to 61 was for the development of the public sector or industrialization this was one of those points which decided the course of future of india the government imposed a uh, import substitution trade policy also known as the inward looking trade strategy in 1950 in order to protect the dom- domestic firms for from the international market competition and a successful sustainment within the country 
Imports were nearly made negligible and only the domestic products were promoted. But this served as a backlash to the policy and um, halfway through its tenure it was already predicted to be a failure. What happened after this was put into effect was that the country's GDP went terribly low since there was no systematic export and import. When the, when the GDP showed decreased economic productivity it made the value of this currency also decrease. Now I would uh, want to say that if there are no imports of a country, it is more likely to remain aloof and cut off from the outside world. A country's goodwill, reputation, economic ties with international market means a lot when speaking internationally. Exchange of ideas, cultural practices, technological imports among countries bonded with trading can bring cultural enrichment, fostering global cooperation and integration. Export, import helps associate bilateral trade in which countries can reduce tariffs, import quotas and finish cultural and interpersonal barriers. Currently we have the largest exports from UAE and US is also among our top, top trading partners. Uh, the recent data I would like to share is we have trades with China with 14%, USA with 7% and UAE with 6% pre-COVID. Uh, so, concluding my argu arguments against today's topic, I would like to state that Vixit Bharat should aim for more export promotion, yes, but not exclusively Indian made products. It should include products offered by other countries too in order to maintain a balance among self sustainment and outer relationships. Vixit Bharat is a new development and a niche concept and it should explore more, more to uh, suit whatever is best for India. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Respected speaker, sir, I want to ask a question here. Are we Indian? Uh, someone in the against the motion speaker said, my friend in the against the motion speaker said, uh, getting help from Germ Tata about some Tata factory, getting help from Germany is not uh defines uh, defies from the statement that make in india can you uh, in the present time we know that uh, now what are the tata companies are doing they're making in india the things are making in, in, in india so i like to say if you are given a homework of physics you do a homework on chemistry that will not work so uh, now in the making in making make in india uh, GDP development, uh, we know all know it will contribute to the GDP development. So I would like to say made in India is better than made in China. Now you decide made in India or made in China. Again, I want to conclude my speech with one thing that are we Indian? Thank you. Thank you. First thing first, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon to my, uh, to the speaker, my uh, respected teachers, faculty members, and my peers. Uh, from the uh, from the people who have spoken against the motion, I seem to sense a lack of logic and understanding about what we are actually talking about here. So. My question, to answer your question uh, about am I really Indian? Well, um, it is not necessary to ask that question because uh, since I'm from Manipur, we, uh, I'm not talking about separatism or here anything about that. So if my state is about to, uh, is burning for decades, I mean like for uh, about 10 months, then, uh, and the government is doing nothing to stop about it, then I will not consider myself an Indian, but uh, I can sing the Janagana Mana and I'll sing the national anthem. So sorry to uh, say that, I'm not against any organization or stuff. Let's get to the main point over here. Um, we should not be, you know, carried away or like uh, very uh, very influenced by what the uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is blabbering about since uh, uh, since uh, 2014 or 2015 which when he started the making India con uh, making India uh, ideology well yeah at first we were moved because like we see foreign companies foreign brands foreign clothing everywhere 
So one way I want to say is that we can make clothing if we can make uh, our products better by learning to cope with the newest fashion trends. And let me say something. If we were to, uh, if we are really Indian or like we want to make in India for everything, then why are some of us wearing Western clothes? Why are we still using this technology, mobile technology, which is made in Western countries, China, Japan? Two minutes. Okay. Two minutes. Okay. So, uh, to my next point, let me say something. <coughs> let me say something. Uh, Let's take a comparison between countries. Let's see. Let's talk about China. When China was uh, liberated under the Communist Party of China, we, we saw that there was an economic boom. Why did that happen? Anyone? No. So uh, the economic boom happened because uh, they opened up the market, free market, extended the market to everywhere, cheap labor, cheap labor, everything at low cost. And we saw that uh, China's economic boom was uh, scientifically, uh, not scientifically or literally, uh, rising in an exponential graph rising in an exponential graph, the economy of Chinese. And today we have Chinese people at the second largest economy, which uh, with 11, around 12,000, uh, I mean $19,000 per capita. And we have Indians still mongering around the 7,000 limit. You know why? Because we were having the milk or the white revolution in that period, which we uh, would, uh, which we were having, and like we uh, closed the market <laughs> at that period of time. Had we opened that period of opened the market in that period of time, we would have been fighting with the Chinese. And let's talk about uh, the time. Okay, thank you. A very good afternoon to all the respected teachers, my fellow judge, the teachers from the science departments, and my dear students. Uh, well, uh, we were called here to judge the debate competition on the topic only made in India for Vikshit Bharat. Um, at the moment, uh, something like debate, elocution, such kind of things comes, we don't need invitation, we just walk into it. Um, it was quite interesting to hear some of the young boys and girls speaking uh, in front of the students. However, uh, just a few words of caution for the upcoming debaters, because I believe some of you are in second semester, third, fourth sem, you might represent the university. Now, there is a way to go ahead with a debate. Uh, as uh, my fellow judge and we were sitting and listening to you, uh, it was like more or less a reading competition, to be honest. Few were good enough, but some of you require a lot of polishing. Uh, see, don't take it negatively, because the very fact that coming and standing in front of an audience and speaking itself is something very, you know, I would say great. But I would request you especially the ones who are really interested in debates, to go through some proper YouTube videos or, you know, we have a debating club out here and we have some very excellent debaters. If you are really interested, you know, you can go to them, you know, learn a few techniques about debating. Um, see, uh, just one example. When we talk about debate, you have to understand that there is a time limit. And because of the time constraint that we had today, it was all the more restricted to two minutes. Now, within two minutes, you are supposed to press your points forward. You are not supposed to go out of the topic. Some of my young friends went out of the topic. Thereby, you are wasting your time. So there are, there are a few important points which if you Keep in mind, definitely you'll become good debaters in future. In any case, it was a good one, uh, and we hope. Good evening, one and all present here. Uh, it has been an honor to be a part of such a, a wonderful event. So on behalf of the organizing committee, I would like to uh, thank our honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor S.P. Singh, 
Chairperson Academics Professor Alok Kumar Buraguhai, Dean Academics Professor Ankur Ganguly, Senior Professor Rita Chaudhary, Dean of RCEPS, um, Professor Anuradha Devi, uh, she is on leave, Deputy Dean and HOD of Physics, Professor Devika Phukan, she is also on leave. Uh, HOD of Mathematics, Dr. Kamal Devnath, and HOD of Chemistry Department, Dr. Pubali Sharva, for giving their valuable time for this event. I also extend my heartfelt gratitude to the invited speakers, Professor uh, Bula Chaudhary and Dr. Rajiv Chandra Dev Gussami from Guwahati Biotech Park for their motivational talk, without uh, whom this event wouldn't have been successful. Uh, it would be unfair if I do not mention uh, the names of Ankur Kalita and Vishal Das uh, on on, uh, for, this, for coming to this event. I also thank all the faculty members and my dear audience for their patience in attending the event. Also, I thank the technical department. Uh, a heart full of thanks to the judges of the debate uh, competition. Ayushman Dev, uh, Dr. Aishman Devraj and uh, Dr. Dhiraj Borkotoki, uh, Bor and also the judges of the poster competition, Dr. Sujata Dev, Dr. Biswajit Sharma, and Dr. Bimalandu Kalita. It would be uh, partial if I do not mention the names of my fellow colleague, Dr. Bapan Kalita, and my dear friend, Dr. Bornali uh, Chetia, for giving their valuable suggestions for, uh, for this event. I thank my two students, uh, Chayanika Vishwas and uh, Dhiraj Jain of Mathematics Department for hosting the event. Last but not the least, I thank the organizing, my organizing members, uh, Dr. Gitanjal Deka, Dr. Uh, Debodit Sahu, Dr. Uh, uh, Dipankar uh, Saha, Dr. Saurabh, and Dr. Saurabh Das. Thank you all once again. And if I have left anyone's names, please forgive me for that. Thank you all.